Alrighty. So for those of you who don't know me, my name's Lisa. I have two main businesses, Retrohex, where I offer WordPress website design and WordPress hosting and management. And then my second business is called Eat Digital, which I run with two other amazing women, Nuri and Susanna, who might be joining me a bit later, hopefully. Hopefully they'll come in. Nuri's had lots of issues with her internet. Um, and yeah, we offer, uh, we teach digital marketing in a group setting. So that's run through a Facebook group. So because of what I do, I run a lot of online workshops and one-on-one -on -one sessions and Zoom has been my tool of choice to run these. Um, I'm, I'm using, um, I'm actually using Toomba.com.au's Zoom at the moment because it allows me to uh, run my sessions longer and it allows me to have up to 100 people. Usually I just use a free version of Zoom but we'll look at that a bit later and I'll be talking over those a bit later. So over the last week, I've had a load of conversations with clients and businesses regarding their fear going into the next six months because of this social distancing and isolation because of the coronavirus. Any face-to-face -face businesses are really gonna be affected. So we need to be thinking of ways to start getting our businesses online so we can continue to offer services and products. Now, Zoom is not going to work for everything, but it may help you start to think about what other services you could offer, such as training classes, workshops, or virtual groups. So I want you guys to remain open to all the possibilities. Yes, it might mean that you have to learn a new skill and push yourself out of comfort zone, but if we're not willing to innovate at the moment, um, we really aren't going to make it through the next six months. So I've been meaning to run this workshop for a while, but now it's pushed me to do it. And I really wanted to do it for free because I know a lot of you um, are struggling at this time. So I wanted to make it available to everyone. So hopefully after tonight, you'll have a better understanding of what Zoom is, how Zoom could work for your business, and also show you how to utilize this awesome tool. So we're going to be covering um, what Zoom is and how it could be used for your business. The many, many features of Zoom and also the pricing options. How to sign in and use Zoom and how to set up your first meeting. Equipment that you should be looking at. Um, and Paul from Entire Computer Services is here. He's waving and he'll be talking through some of that equipment and preparation that you need to consider. Another thing we're going to be looking at, yes, you're going to set up these amazing workshops via Zoom or one-on-one um, -on -one sessions, but if no one knows about it, then no one's going to book in or no one's going to attend your events. So we're going to be looking at some ways to promote your event and set up tickets so you can actually make money um, from these as well. Then at the end, we'll have some time for questions and discussions. Um, we can turn the microphones on, we can all chat. Um, and throughout the session, please ask any questions. After each session um, topic, I will open it up for questions as well. So feel free to ask questions and put them in the chat. I will try and answer questions in the chat. If I know that the topic is gonna be covered a bit later, I'll just refer to that a bit later. Um, but before we dive in, I really wanted to open up the conversation first to see how coronavirus social distancing and isolation is affecting your business or how you see it will start to affect your business. So if you want to write that in the, the chat, you can. If you want to, you can unmute and you can share with us as well if you're willing to share. So does anyone want to share? how the coronavirus is affecting their business at the moment or how they see that it will be. Anyone, anyone? Oh, yep, Paul, Paul put his hand up. Let me go unmute. Yeah, at the moment, um, I'm not seeing a lot of uh, change or demand, but I can see as more, I'm, I'm Paul Balti, Entire Computer Services. 
Uh, we specialize in tech support for individuals, homes, and micro businesses. Now, at the moment, um, people, I haven't uh, got a lot of extra work, but I'm, I'm gearing up to hopefully that uh, people will be working from home and requiring uh, the further needs. So if anything, I'm assuming I'm going to get busier. What will be hard is if people need on, on-site tech support, that's where it's going to get difficult because if, if we get if we pretty much get locked down, uh, that's going to make it hard to provide that support because I can only do so much remote support before I need to be there to hold someone's hand. Yeah. Uh, so it's a bit of an unknown for me at this point. Sure. Okay, Roe, I'll unmute you. Can you talk there, Roe? I'm talking. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. So I'm in education, obviously. Um, I work with the Education Department of New South Wales and we're very reined in on, on what we're saying in our messaging at the moment. But the flip side, I'm also a mum and in contact with lots of families and people choosing to not send their children to school. And so I see an opportunity as a teacher to be able to teach into that and use you know, video or Facebook Live or maybe Zoom um, but maybe not under the education New South Wales Department head, maybe my other hat that I wear with educational consultancy with, a, with Sydney Therapy Co and Lane Co. But I'm just trying to work out um, what I can and can't do. So I want to learn Zoom because I feel there'd be a greater need to support parents at home um, in supporting their children with their learning and new concepts. So that's what I'm seeing. It will be growth. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of changes and I guess we'll find out over the weekend what's going to be happening next week with schools. There's been a lot of discussion around that. Um, anyone else want to say, you can put your hand up. So to raise your hand, you just go to the participant area and you can put your hand up there. Oh, here we go. Katrina Lynn. Oh, Kat. <laughs> <laughs> I just called you Katrina. It's so funny. It sounds like I'm in trouble. Um, so, yeah, definitely the photography industry has been hit hard and my speciality is food. So, um, obviously, the cafes and restaurants are struggling and will continue to struggle, So, which is very sad. This is the ideal time that they actually need to get um, high-quality digital images up online to try and, you know, at least tap into the delivery section of... The business, um, but they're just cutting, cutting really, really hard into their income that they have at all. Um, obviously, we've a lot of weddings have been cancelled, events have been cancelled. I've had to cancel um, a couple of my food workshops because of the way that the um, originally the close proximity and the transfer of food, so that has to stop. Um, but on the flip side, I'm looking at ways to do my product photography skills online. Um, and I'm hoping Zoom is going to be able to answer that for me. The other part that I do want to tap into, and it's like all of us, we sort of, we do have many hats. And one of my hats is helping businesses to hopefully uncover their ideal customer and their opportunities and gaps in their businesses through service design and customer uh, mapping, which is a little bit, it sounds a little bit woohoo and all that sort of stuff but it's actually a very valuable tool so I'm just working with that and hopefully next week I can share a little bit more so yeah yeah it's definitely hard for photography I was reading a blog today around what you can do if you're a photographer in this time and there wasn't anything really that would make you money it was more like you know update your website and add a blog and <laughs> You know, things like that, which is all good, but is it going to bring money in the door? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Anyone else? Last last one. Is there anyone else who wants to share? Um, let's go down to the chat here. So I run group business classes, versus Tash, Pilates, Mum and Bubs classes, and I want to be able to keep my members moving via live classes with modifications. Yep, definitely. So I guess with social isolation, have you been restricted with that, Tash, or you've just been finding people aren't coming through the door because they're isolating themselves? Um, at the moment, basically, numbers are still good. We're doing the social distancing and everything, um, and we train predominantly outdoors. 
Um, but I also do indoors for Pilates and things like that. And I don't have enough space for the social distancing or I do at the moment, but I'm expecting that I won't. So I'm wanting to be able to keep them moving through, through those harder classes that I can't modify. Um, and yeah, just more for their mental health as well, not just their physical health. Um, and a lot of my members are wanting to keep it going as long as we can currently. And I'm sure there's a lot of other people out there that might want a personalised service as well. So I'm hoping to be able to offer that. Um, yeah. I do honestly prefer face-to-face, -face, but clearly it's going to go away from that for a short period of time. So this is hopefully just a intermediate measure and I can go back to face-to-face -to -face would be my ideal. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I um, signed up for a gym this year and I've been going really well. Oh my gosh. And now I'm like, oh, I can't go to gym well. So that's sucks. It's actually really scary, the health health ramifications that's going to come from this, from the self-isolation and, um, and the eating, this whole panic buying of food and that you're not eating your regular food, not being able to get out and choose what you eat and things like that. So if I can hopefully keep some of my people moving, it'll, it'll decrease what's happening at the other end of this. And then I guess we all start again at the other end. Yeah, definitely. All right. So thanks for sharing that with us. Um, and you'll have the opportunity to share a bit later as well. So let's look at what Zoom is. So at its core, Zoom is a video conferencing tool. And the best way to explain it, I just thought I would show you this video. So fingers crossed this will work. Don't you love technology? Zoom is revolutionizing the way teams collaborate. Whether you're connecting multiple conference rooms or adding remote attendees, meeting face-to-face -face is as simple as a single touch. With the highest video and audio quality, joining a conference remotely is as natural as being there. Feature-rich and yet easy to use, the Zoom mobile and desktop apps bring the whole experience together with built-in group chat. Transform your video conferencing experience with Zoom. Thanks, Zoom. All right. So um, it was founded in 2011 and Zoom helps businesses and organizations bring their teams together in a frictionless environment to get more done. And now with our increasing need to isolate and work remotely, it has become a much needed tool. So how can we use Zoom for our businesses? So there's many applications for Zoom. And now with our forced isolation, I'm sure we can think of many more uses. As you can see in this graphics, which is provided by Zoom, there's many um, cases here. So from large meetings, sale demonstrations, interviewing staff, training and learning sessions, webinars, and a whole lot more. When we think of video conferencing, we usually envisage people sitting at a desk, talking to each other like what we're doing now over the internet. However, we really need to push our minds beyond this and think how you could use it for your business. So I really want you to think now about what you do and how you could potentially use Zoom video for your business or service. Um, and maybe write, write down all the different options that you could think of that you could use it for for your business on a piece of paper um, and do a little bit of brainstorming. Um, so I'm just going to um, put on what the whiteboard and I want us to all yell out or type in the chat box things that we can use Zoom for. Feel free to unmute, unmute video, mute video, video conferencing. Yep. That was an easy one. I got that him first. Client check-ins, I like that one. Staff meetings. 
emotional health education guest speakers yes that's a good one we um <clears throat> have a big conference up here in brisbane called code and they've cancelled it but i'm not sure if they're still going to be running it via zoom which i would love because i'd love to hear all the guest speakers do you know if they're still running it via zoom joy Yeah, so there's going to be quite a lot of sessions that are still going to be offered virtually. Um, there's a few that are off already and more will come. Some of them are workshops and some of them are just um, webinars. So yeah, quite a lot. Yeah, cool. cool. Oh yeah, live question and answers. That's a good one. All right, that's some great um, ideas there, work, workshops, teaching, mentoring, group tasks, play and learning ideas for children. Uh, demonstrations. Yep, yeah, demonstrations. Absolutely. So this little tool that I'm using now is the whiteboard in Zoom. So you can see how it's a great way for brainstorming with your team. Um, and to help you guys think outside the box. So let me get back to the other screen. So Zoom has some amazing features um, and I'm going to look through those uh, a little bit deeper, but here, here's some that Zoom offers. So there's host controls, which I'm using at the moment. So I'm controlling the room. Screen sharing. So at the moment, I'm screen, um, sharing my PowerPoint screen. Um, whiteboarding, which I just did then. So you can see how you can brainstorm using those whiteboarding tools. Breakout rooms, which are fantastic for larger groups. So you can break out and do more engaging and discussioning. Um, Chat area, the chat area is really cool because you guys can be talking to me without interrupting. And I can also upload a file. So Heidi's asking, where do you access the whiteboard from? If you go up to um, new share or share screen and you click share, the whiteboard tool is in there. So you can access it in there. And the other great thing about Zoom is that you have the ability to record. So I'm recording this. Well, I hope I am. Let me just check. Yes, I am. Good. <laughs> so now I can actually record this whole thing and then I can um, share it with anyone who misses out on their workshop or I can upload it. Um, someone's, someone's doing an, an, an annotation on my screen there. That's so funny. Um, or I can upload it to YouTube later. So let's look at hosting controls. Um, so this is where you can um, manage. So at the moment I have my participant screen up, I have my chat screen up, so I'm managing it and I can access my tool, but I'm just gonna play this video, which will show you the hosting controls a bit better. Hi everyone, this is Farah from Zoom and we are back to share with you some of the fundamental in-meeting controls once you launch your first Zoom meeting. So in order to walk you through, I will share my entire screen. We'll go through some of the options together. You should be able to see my desktop at this point so you can see the Zoom meeting that's in here. Uh, basic controls, you'll see muting and unmuting capability on the lower left hand corner. If I were to click the mute button and try to speak, we will get a pop up to alert you that you are muted and this is what it'll look like. Uh, we can also use the up arrow here to select a different headset. So if you join a meeting and you're not hearing anything, you might want to double check and make sure that your AirPods uh, or your headset uh, is connected and configured in here. If it's not, you can click audio settings to get to an audio dashboard to help configure and test your equipment. 
You'll see the start and stop video option. So if you're a little nervous to start meeting over Zoom with your video on, you can simply click the video off button uh, to show a profile picture if you've created one. Um, otherwise, I always recommend having video on so you can make eye contact with your audience. Um, communication is 70% body language. So being able to see all of your uh, coworkers, counterparts, or people that you're working externally uh, allows you to anticipate when someone might need to pause you to ask a question. Um, you'll also be able to see if people are following along with what you're teaching them or, or speaking about. Same thing here, up arrow will allow you to select any camera equipment. Of course, the uh, FaceTime video camera is built into my MacBook, so you can use that. Or if you have an external camera, you can plug that in and Zoom will recognize it. Moving on, we have the ability for you to invite participants on the fly. Right now, there's nobody actually in this meeting with me, but if I wanted to invite one of my teammates, I could click this button and it would pop open a list of anyone that I am already connected to via Zoom. And it's as easy as selecting multiple participants. You'll see in this list here, it's gonna show me the last 15 to 20 people I worked with before it goes into an alphabetical list. I can click multiple people and click the invite button uh, in one shot, or I can copy the URL, which is the link to the meeting and paste that into a group chat that we have going. You'll see across the top as well, you'll always have an option to uh, email. If you're on our free version of Zoom, you probably won't see room systems, Zoom rooms or phone, but you will always be able to send an email invitation out through your default email, whether it's Outlook or Gmail. You'll also see a manage participants at the bottom. So right now this is letting us know that only one person is connected to our meeting. If I click the button, it allows me to expand to see a list of everybody that has joined. I will always be at the top of this list if I am the host, and then everybody else will show up alphabetically in this list. Folks that unmute themselves will also bubble up to the top in case I need to hover over them and click mute. When you hover over people in the meeting, you'll always have a mute option and a drop down that will give you a few additional action items. So you can mute them, you can give them host permissions, you can remove them from the meeting if they're not supposed to be there. You'll see on the bottom, I've enabled a feature that's called nonverbal feedback. We will have a follow up video showing you how you can enable some of these um, advanced settings if you'd like to use them. So stay tuned for that. But this would allow my audience to say yes or no, go faster, go slower, or even uh, raise their hand or give an applause while we're in a meeting so we can be interactive. Uh, I love the coffee cup. If uh, anybody in your audience selects this, it'll show up right next to your name in this participants list. And one, the, one other thing I wanna point out here is the mute all button. This is sort of our emergency red button. Uh, so if you are getting any sort of background noise or audio feedback while you're in a meeting, you can always quickly hit the mute all button to uh, just stop it while you can identify where the, the background noise is coming from. The more drop down here will give you a couple additional options, things like locking the meeting for security or hearing uh, enter and exit chimes. So I will always know when somebody joins as the host because I can hear a doorbell. We'll move on to our shared content button. Uh, this is something that you'll, you'll notice everyone in your Zoom meeting has. I love this feature so much because it gives anyone the ability to share content, not just the host. By clicking the green button, I will also get a pop-up asking me what I would like to share before I share it, so you never have to worry about sharing your messy desktop. Clicking this button, you'll see the pop-up on my screen here. I can select uh, a specific desktop. For example, you can see my cluttered desktop over here. I will not share with you, um, but I can choose a clean desktop. I can choose a specific application, like just a web browser or just a PowerPoint presentation. And of course, if you want to share a video on YouTube, you'll want to select that button and make sure you're clicking share computer sound and optimizing the video clip for your audience before you hit the blue share button. And then that will go live for everyone on the other end. I'll go ahead and hit the stop share button now to show you two or three uh, features that can piggyback off of this. Let me go back to my main desktop. Once we are in shared mode, you'll notice an annotation tool. If you're the host, this bar will show up at the top with a pen tool. If you're a participant, you'll see at the top, uh, basically uh, it should say 
whoever the host is sharing, there should be a little drop down that says more options. If you click more options, that will bring you to your pen tool. Um, if you don't see this for whatever reason on your screen when you are live in a meeting, you may need to hit the escape button because you might be in full screen mode. But with annotation, it'll expand into a toolkit that I can use to uh, use a spotlight tool. I can also use it to draw shapes on my screen. And uh, also I can just freeform anything as well. So I can say hello from Denver and draw that on here as well. So this is something that anyone in your audience, not just the host, can be annotating live while you're sharing content. So if you have questions, you can circle and say, what kind of plant is this? And I'll be able to answer that question for you. The host will also be able to clear the drawing um, and the host can also use their more options to um, basically disable annotation for guests when they're in the meeting. You'll see disable uh, attendee annotation. You can also see who's drawing on your screen, which is a pretty cool feature. Now, if you want to restrict others in the audience from sharing their content and make it host only, you can simply leverage the up arrow, which is right here at the bottom of my screen. You'll see this up arrow lets me go into advanced sharing and this pop up will allow me to make it a host only share. So this will restrict users from sharing anything uh, out of turn that might be distracting. I'm going to go ahead and put this back onto all participants while we move to the next feature, which is in meeting chat. So if you're in a meeting and you want to chat with everyone, you can click this chat button here. You'll get a little pop out window and I can say hello to the audience. I can post a link to zoom.us or even to our um, support page. And if I want to, uh, if there were other folks joining in this meeting where it says everyone would be a drop down where I could simply select one other person to privately chat with. Um, love this feature a lot. Highly recommend testing it before you go into a live meeting, testing it with your um, friends or colleagues. And you'll see here that I can also merge this to my meeting window by using the triple ellipses here. And so I can have a dashboard on the right hand side, letting me control my audience as well as chat with them at the same time. And I think the final feature that we'll review on this recording before we go into our advanced would be the ability for you to uh, record a session. So I've already started recording. So it shows my only options are to pause the recording or stop the recording outright. Now, if I wasn't recording, I'd have a circle that would allow me to initiate the record. I'd like to note out here that only the host of the meeting has permission to record. If you are a free uh, user, you will be able to record directly on your laptop. If you are a licensed user, you will be able to record out to the cloud, which is what I'm doing now. So this recording will uh, come up with a link that I can share with others when it's done. Um, Last but not least, don't forget to end the meeting when you're done with a meeting. You'll get a pop up allowing you to leave if you need to head out early or end the meeting for everybody. We are always going to recommend that you make sure you end the meeting for everyone so you can go start your next meeting. Um, thank you again for watching this recording. I hope you learned a little bit about some of the basic controls when you start your first Zoom meeting. Um, let us know your feedback and stay tuned for advanced settings when you're in a meeting. Uh, also have some recordings for reviewing Zoom on your mobile phone coming out shortly. Thanks again and happy Zooming. Alrighty. So that was a really great overview of some of the amazing features that Zoom has. Um, and it's really interesting because I really wanted to show you guys do it like me doing that with the zoom panel and everything. Um, but I think I had to get like a different setup with camera so I can actually show you how to do it using my own panel. So that's why I just got the zoom video up to do that. And she does an amazing job. So all those amazing features, the, the share screening, the whiteboard, the breakout rooms, the chat, the ability to record. And there's also some really fun features, which I'm going to look at now. One is called the virtual background.
So if you guys hover over your panel at the bottom and you go to the video icon and the arrow there, there and you scroll down and there's something called choose a virtual background. You can actually go in there and you can give yourself a background. So I want you guys to have a play now and I want to see what backgrounds you come up with. So this is my um, workshops by Retrohex logo. As you can see, it's mirrored. So to unmirror, uh, if, you, if you can't get them to work, you might have to install something, a little plugin. All you do is it'll come up and say install the plugin and you can click on that. To install it which means you don't have to have a green screen behind you so you can imagine I could actually have all my slide or like some points behind me if I wanted to so I could be like um, the what are the news reporters you know how they point to things there but because this is mirrored I'm going to tell you how to turn it around so while you're still in that settings area um, there's a tab that says video. So if you click on the video tab, it will then come up with some options there. And there's an option that says enabled mirror effect. So if I click on that, now it's the right way around. So now you can see my workshops by Retrohex, even though my chair sort of gets in the way. Um, but that's a really cool feature if you're wanting to really have a brand and you have a horrible background behind you as well. The other cool little trick while you're still in that um, area, so you're in the video setting area, is that, um, oh, sorry, I didn't catch how to get to the background screen. So if you go to your toolbar and then you hover on the arrow on the stop video, so there's a little arrow there that's pointing down. Then go down to video settings or choose virtual background. You'll be able to get in there. Let me know how you go with that, Heidi. So yeah, when you're in the video settings, there's something that says touch up my appearance. So I can actually look more beautiful if that's even possible. So I've just done that. Um, uh, on your phone, I don't know if you can do that on your phone. I don't think you can do it on your phone. Let me know anyone zoom experts in here if you can do it on your phone virtual background so as you can see my virtual backgrounds there i'm going to turn that off because i don't like having a virtual background <laughs> oh, it's weird so that's just a fun thing that you guys can play around with um how did you go so i can't see myself it's flickering in and out yeah it's not working very well tash on there, you have to turn your video on as well, probably, so you can see it. So there, some of the really cool features in Zoom. Um, obviously, there's a lot to learn in Zoom. Um, so let's look at what's included in the free version. So everything that that lady just showed you, from the hosting panel, from sharing the ability to share your screen, from using the whiteboards. Um, the annotation where you can draw on your screen, the breakout rooms, um, the chat areas, um, the recording. Um, you, you get that all included in the free um, Zoom membership. However, it is limited to 40 minutes only. Um, so if you have two or more participants. So if you have three or more participants, then you really um, can't go beyond the 40 minutes. It will cut you out. Um, if you're running a one-on-one -on -one session, then that's fine and it can go forever. So if you're just having a one-on-one -on -one consultation with a client, um, oops, someone's in there, let me just mute them. Um, then you, if you're, if you're having a one-on-one -on -one consultation, then it's fine, you can go for longer than 40 minutes. But if you have three or more, you can't go for 40 minutes. So if you're looking at running a session with up to 100 people for less than 40 minutes, then the free version is fine. But if you're running to run a longer session with three or more people, like this one, for instance, 
then you have to upgrade. And I'm actually using the toomba.com.au Zoom on here because they have the paid version. Um, so I can have up to 100 people for, for 24 hours on that one. So I could run an entire day workshop um, with breakout sessions and we can have a really, really fun time. Um, if you need more than 100 participants, then you would have to go for the, the $27.99 one, which is up to 300 participants. Um, and you can also brand it. So you can add your domain name, you can add branding to emails and you can send invites out for that. So was there any questions regarding the Zoom features or the pricing? Let me know in the chat or put your hand up and I can unmute you. Uh, yep, Joy. Um, you mentioned there was an app or something that you could put in to help with the uh, background, changing the background. Um, do you know what that is or where you find it? Yeah, so when you go into the settings, so when you go into the visual background and you click on one of the images, it'll say um, install the plugin if, if you can't use it already. So yours is actually working, so it's using it, even though it's chopping your head out. <laughs> That was, that was kind of my question. I wondered if it would fix it because I cannot find any way to fix it. It no, just tells me that you can't. So your next best option yeah. would be having to have a green screen behind you probably. Yeah, Even works, with green it's screen, best. it's a little bit tricky. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Yeah, maybe because it's white. Maybe if you try like Canvas, Canvas co-working no, logo on like matter. the red or something, it might work. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I can go to this one. Yeah, it looks still. strange. Tammy, I agree. I've got a green screen behind me, but there's borders either side, and as a result, it's uh, affected up there. Oh, hang on. Oh, yeah. There, there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So it is a little bit um, not quite up to scratch, really. Um, are there additional security features with paid version? Security meaning, um, what do you mean by security, Stacey? Maybe you could clarify that. Yeah. Um, yep. Hi. Can you hear me? I'm a psychologist and there's been kind of talk online about how secure these um, online platforms are in terms of confidentiality. So I think um, Skype, for example, has been kind of voted not as secure. Just wondering um, in terms of encryption, I've, I've heard that the paid version have high levels of end-to-end -end encryption in terms of, um, I guess, what we do online. Yeah, so if we go into, let me just click on this link. I'm pretty sure all of the meetings are encrypted um, and they're over the SSL secure site. So let's just click on the security. Okay, so secure locker encryption and um, AES 256 bits encryption. I'm not really familiar with that sort of wording. Do you understand any of that? all at all as a general rule uh yeah that's sort of th th that's considered to be an industry standard for um uh quite high grade encryption um i haven't investigated at all so i don't really know as far as uh, what zoom encrypts just because someone encryp encrypts something doesn't mean there's another area of weakness in the system but it's certainly better than no encryption at all so i would say uh uh, they, they would probably have it wrapped up. Yeah, I think it's. I think though, if you're really looking for something secure, you would need to contact the Zoom support. Um, they're extremely good at getting back to you. So I'm a Zoom um, partner, so I can on-sell it. And their support has been amazing. So they're happy to talk to you. They're inundated at the moment as well. Um, but still, they get back to me within the day, which is um, incredible. So I would just contact them to ask them those specific questions around security, especially in your industry where it needs to be super secure. Um, okay, thank you. Yeah, no worries. I know there are certain industries, you know, big corporations where they can't um, utilize things like Skype because it's on personal phones. So there is a lot of issues around, yes, yeah, security, but the best bet would be just to ask them. 
Was there any other questions regarding the Zoom features? Now I did have a video about the breakout rooms. I might play that for you guys um, because she didn't really cover uh, the breakout room. So let me play that for you. Video breakout rooms allow Zoom users to easily place meeting attendees into sub-meetings for group discussion, activities, projects, and more. To get started, log in at zoom.us and view the meeting settings section. Click to edit advanced settings and make sure that breakout rooms is checked. The next time you host a Zoom meeting, you will see the breakout rooms button at the bottom of the Zoom panel. While you are sharing your screen, the button is under the more menu. Click here to start using breakout rooms. Zoom will show the number of eligible participants. Choose how many rooms to create and let Zoom assign the participants automatically or choose to manually assign for more control, as we'll demonstrate here. Create breakout rooms to proceed. Your breakout rooms are now available and participants are still in the main meeting. Float your mouse over the breakout room to rename or delete the room. Click to assign participants, check their names, and click Assign again. Do this for each breakout room. Your participants are now assigned. If you want to change an assignment, float your mouse over a participant name where you can move the participant to another room or exchange the participant with someone already assigned to another room. When you're ready, click to open all rooms. This will cause your participants to automatically move into their assigned breakout room. The list will indicate that participants have successfully connected when the gray dot turns green. Meeting participants will be prompted to join breakout rooms where they can speak on audio, show their webcams, share screen, and chat as normal. They can also ask for help to send a prompt to the meeting host. Participants can also choose to leave the breakout room anytime to be returned to the main meeting. Return to the breakout rooms list as the host and you can choose to join any of the breakout rooms to offer assistance. You can broadcast a message to participants and a banner will be displayed. This is great for instructions or timing announcements. Again, float your mouse over a participant name to move the participant. When you are ready, close the breakout rooms. Participants will have 60 seconds to finish their discussion and will be returned to the main meeting. Open the breakout rooms menu again to quickly reopen the same breakout rooms or to make new assignments. To learn more, visit zoom.us forward slash live training to register for weekly training sessions. Need help? Visit support.zoom.us for 24-7 assistance. So how cool is the breakout room? I think that's like for large gatherings, it's such a great tool to um, break out and do brainstorming and engage with people out there. So I had a few other questions here in the chat. I'm not really clear about how to get the whiteboard up. So Sally, to get the whiteboard up, if you um, hover on your tool or hover on your page, the tool toolbar will pop up and you go to share screen. And then when you click on that, it will come up with um, some options like screen one, screen two, depending on how many screens you have. And there should be the whiteboard option that you can then click on there. Um, and you can use that then to write on. So hopefully that answers that one. Lisa, it's just not visible while you're sharing. That's all. So we can't see it while you're sharing. Right. Okay. So you can't, sh you, you're not able to share anything at the moment because I haven't enabled that. Yeah. Um, so the other questions were, um, is the phone in option like I'm using for audio available in the free Zoom? Yes. So the phone in option is for your participants and that's just part of the invitation. So Zoom can let you sign in via computer, via the phone app, or just phone in via the phone. Um, also, Tammy says, I'm a natural therapist and we've been advised that Zoom, Zoom consultations are acceptable for privacy reasons. Okay, that's good to know. Um, is that free as well in free version? 
what was the what's the free bit cat that you're wanting to know about oh the breakout yes the breakout is free you just have to make sure you select it in the settings and i'm going to be showing you how to do that now so we're going to look at how to set up a zoom account and start scheduling your meetings so i'm just going to clear clear all drawings people have been drawing on my screen i love it um so i'm just going to go into a, a new incognito window and go to zoom just so you can see the process of signing in so when you sign in you'll just land in this page and you just need to click this sign up free and then you can go through and set up your account, so your emails and fill in all the details. Then you'll get notified via email that you've been signed up and then you'll be able to log in. And that's all free, so you don't need to pay for any of that. And then once you've set up your account and you've registered, then you'll be able to access your Zoom. So this is my Zoom area where I, I land and then I go into my account. So I'm just going to click my account and this is where I can start setting up my meetings. So over, so this is the my account dashboard where you find most of your settings and where you can set up your recording. So once you've signed up for your free Zoom account, um, then you can come in and set up your meetings in here. So on the left hand side of the dashboard, there's your profile where you can change all your settings there. And obviously I'm using Toomba.com they use. Thank you, Nuri and Brendan for letting me use your paid version. Um, this will still all look the same for the free version as well. Then on the left hand side, you can see meetings. So this is all the scheduled meetings. So you, you can see this one that I scheduled. This is the one that I scheduled for tonight in there. Now the webinar setting is um, an, a paid service. So webinar in, allows you, so Zoom, webinars for Zoom allows you to do a lot more, have a lot more participants, send out invitations and emails and things like that, but it's a lot more expensive. I think it's $60 a month or something like that. So we're not gonna be covering that. For the purposes of what majority of us are doing, we generally won't need that. In the recordings tab, this is where you can see recordings that have been saved on the cloud. So you can see cloud recordings and local recordings. So I'm actually, and local recordings means it's going to save it to my computer. So I'm actually recording this tonight and recording it to my computer. And then in settings, this is where we wanna go in and make sure we um, choose certain settings in here. So on the, um, as you scroll down, you can see these jump to areas, but we'll just scroll down and you can see what you can change. So these are default settings, which will cover, anytime you set up a meeting, these settings will apply to that meeting. However, when you do set up a new meeting, there are some options that you can enable or disable in there as well. So I can start meetings with the host video on and participant videos on. Um, I can allow people to join before me. Um, another thing is you can require a password. So if you don't want just anyone to jump in, like tonight, I was able to share the Zoom link and the ID. But if I required only certain people, I could um, set a password up. Now this one's turned on for Toowoomba.com.au, but in the meeting, which I'm gonna show you soon, I was able to turn that off to allow anyone to just access it. Um, if we go down further, there's another option here you might wanna have on, which is mute participants as they enter, which is a good idea if you've got 100 people coming in, just so you can get started without having to mute everyone. Um, another really good one is to allow meeting participants to send messages to all the participants um which is really good and also this private chat so at the moment in the chat area you can um talk to everybody but you can also choose to talk to individual people which is considered a private chat so you can turn that on and off 
You can also save your chat. So if you want it, so if people are talking about stuff and are giving feedback and you want to save that, you can do that. Another option that is really important to turn on is to turn on the file transfer so people can upload or you can upload files in the chat. So I can come in and now upload a, um, a workbook if I want it in there for you so you can then download it. Um, and you can work your way through there. Um, polling is also another option in the chat area as well. So you can survey attendees so you can turn that one on and off. Um, further down, which is a really important one, and what I love, so there's the annotation on your whiteboard, so they're all turned on. Make sure you have your breakout room turned on. So a lot of, <laughs> I like that arrow, good one, Paul. Um, a lot of people, I knew that was you. <laughs> a lot of people forget to turn this one on, they can't find the breakout room. So make sure you go through and turn on all those. There's heaps, like the virtual background, there's it just goes on and on and on. So make sure you go through um, and turn those ones on and off um, accordingly to what you want. Then further down, you have user management, room management, account management, and advanced. User management is where you can add other users, which I've never done that. Let me know if you guys have done that. Room management is if you have, it's not something that we would utilize, that's a paid for Zoom room. So if you have a big building and you have Zoom in all the rooms, um, you can use that. Account management, which is all your account stuff, and then advanced, which is all the paid extra stuff in there. Um, so people are trying individual chat, good on you. Yeah, have, it, have a conversation with someone, but then make sure you turn it back to everyone chat. Otherwise, you might just keep talking to someone, but you're wanting everyone else to hear what you're say, saying. Okay, so that's the dashboard. Now I'm going to show you how to set up your first meeting. Um, so I'm going to pretend that I run yoga classes since there's a lot of you yoga classy people in here. Um, so I'm going to set up, schedule a new meeting, meeting. So there's a few ways you can access that. You can access it through meetings and you can click schedule new meeting or up here you can click schedule new meeting. So I'm just going to click this one schedule new meeting and now it's going to bring up this area where you just need to go in and fill in all the details and change settings as well so my topic is uh, let's go weekly yoga oh yoga it I can never type when when other people are watching me <laughs> everyone close your eyes um, so I can type properly so you give your um, meeting a title, then you can give it a description. So I'm just going to write weekly meetings for um, my clients, whatever you want to add in there. And then you can um, add in your dates, so when you want to schedule it. So I'm going to schedule it for tomorrow at um, uh, let's go 5 p.m. and um, for a one, one hour duration or you can go one and a half hours depending how long. Um, so now, now you have to consider, so this is where you have to consider about paid and unpaid. So I'm in the paid one which means that I can go for longer with more than three people. So if you're going to be running classes with 10 to 20 people, and they're going to go longer than 40 minutes, then you will have to upgrade to the $21 a month. Otherwise, they will get cut off at the 40 minutes. Saying that, I have been on Zoom and I've been in a group with more than three people and Zoom sometimes is very nice and lets you go a bit longer. Let me know if that's occurred with you guys, but I think that's not a risk you should take and you should probably upgrade to that $21 a month. So you can have more than three people for more than 40 minutes in there. Now a really great um, option is that you can create reoccurring meetings. So every, um, every Saturday at 5 p.m. I'm going to have these yoga meetings. So I'm gonna click weekly, repeat weekly on the Saturday 
Um, and I can also put an end date. So say it's only going to go for five weeks, I can end, um, add that there or after five occurrences, I could add there. So that's a really cool little feature. Um, now this is where you can have registration required. <laughs> now, registration requires means that people have to register. So once they get the invite, they then have to register to get into the Zoom meeting. And I've just found that that's been a bit of a nightmare. Um, and I would recommend for your first few sessions not to have that because it's just a lot of double handling, letting people in and out. The other one is whether you require a password or not. And again, for me personally, something like a yoga class, I wouldn't require a password. If it was, um, you know, you really wanted to restrict people entering, then a password you could have in there. Like if you had like a VIP members only group so and you didn't want to, oh, sorry, someone wanted to ask a question. Is that someone? No. Oh, he, Heidi's got a question. I taught a class through the week and our time was Zoom was extended past the 40 minutes. I thought it was maybe generous due to the issues. Yeah, it has happened. It, it's happened to me in the past, but also it has happened where it's just cut me off as well. Um, and important to note that the duration does not make your call stop. It's just for the calendar invitation. Good point there, Joy. Um, and yes, Zoe has definitely had the 40 minute cutoff during the call. Yeah, and I have as well. Another thing, if you are meeting with three or more, so say if you're meeting with four people, say you're meeting with four people and it, and it will warn you, it'll say, you know, the call's about to close. You guys can then leave and then come back. Like you can dial back in with four people. Like that's not too complicated. But if you've got 10 people or like, 80 people, then I wouldn't suggest that um, at all. Like that would be us, all of us now having to leave and then having to re-sign in. So it's very, it's not something you want to be doing. You want to <laughs> be able to have continuity. So I wouldn't recommend that. The other option is having the video host on um, and the participants off. So you can have either, obviously you would want the host on unless there's a reason why you wouldn't. Another thing I want to point out there is that people some people who have poor internet reception so they have limited bandwidth find it um, very breaky uppy with the video so i know nuri who lives um, quite remotely struggles with having her video on so she turns her video off which means that we can hear her more clearly and it's not getting interrupted as, as much but if you have 4g reception you should be fine in your area um, question, uh, if people have a meeting idea, doesn't that mean they are the one, only ones who can join? In other words, you're controlling. Yes, so meeting ideas are great because you can share that. But if that person then shared that meeting idea with someone else, someone else can literally join in, like they can sign in to Zoom and use that. So the password will restrict. So they'd have to have the password then to sign as well. So it's like an extra layer of not letting people in, basically. Yes, exactly. You can forward the invite as well. Yep. So, for example, Rowena just invited someone into the group um, and they can just come straight in to the group. They don't, like, because I haven't got a password on. But if there was a password, they would need the password to get in. Um, but Rowena could share the password too. So, I mean, you know, that's life, isn't it, unfortunately? I mean, you could share every password with me. I could sign into everything. Now, audio, um, so I could, so I let you guys uh, dial in with phone. So here it says um, you can use the telephone or just computer audio, but I've let you with both. And I chose that people can call in from Australia and I got rid of the United States. People can't call in from the United States because it was only Australia. But you can go through and if you have people in different countries, you can definitely um, use all those. And Zoom will actually, in the invitation, which I'll show you later, will um, show them how to find their phone number to log in 
to the actual Zoom meeting by phone. Now the meeting options here is you can enable people join before host, which I did tonight. So you guys were all in there at 6.30. You all beat me in there, which was great to see, testing out your audio. Um, I muted you guys on entry, I think, maybe, but I can mute you anyway during there as well. Now enable meeting room. If I had ticked that, that meant that when you guys, you wouldn't have been able to join the meeting. You would have been stuck in like a, a, a room that says the host isn't here yet or something like that. And then when I, when I log in as the host, then you guys would be able to come in or I'm not sure. And maybe Joy or Paul might be able to confirm. I'm not sure if I actually have to let them in then as well. Do I have to let them in? You have to let them in. I've done it before. Yes. And so that's something to consider. So, having 80 people tonight or however many there are here tonight if i had to let you all in that's very time consuming for me as a host so really think about you know the, the waiting room's nice because people are like waiting and they're not invading you while you're setting up but just think about that that takes time for you to let them actually in as well Lisa, if I can just add a little bit to that. Sorry, Go for it. doing something else at the time. Um, so the waiting room is really quite nice, particularly if you're going to be running a session with a guest or a couple of guest speakers, and maybe you want them to come in and you want to have a chat to them and test their audio and test their slides and things before you invite all of the rest of your guests in. Um, everyone else knows that they're not being locked out. They're just sitting waiting. Um, and then you just have to hit one button and it opens the doors and everyone comes in. Okay. And it only takes oh, that's awesome. Seconds. I didn't realize that. I thought you had to let yeah. them all in individually. No. Oh, that's so great. It, yeah, do the waiting room in. then. Absolutely. Yeah. I should and have any, done the waiting room. <laughs> anyone who arrives late um, just comes straight in once the doors are open as such. But it just gives you that time to test everything um, and open on time, particularly if people are arriving early and your guests are maybe coming in just five or ten minutes before the session starts. Yep. Um, yeah, so Joy was just saying, if you didn't hear that, that um, you probably did hear it. It was just a little quiet in mine that the waiting room just enables you to, if you have guests, that you can communicate with your guests and get them testing out their slides before everyone comes in. And then you can just let everyone in in one click. So that's really good. Can I quickly um, ask only Lisa? Say that again. Sorry, can I quickly ask, so in, say, a class setting in the fitness classes, if there was a waiting room and I've got it set up the right way, can everyone chat and interact until I start the class? No, no, they can't chat. So they're literally blocked out. They just sort of hold, okay. they're in like a holding room um, before, okay. before you start. If you want them to join in and chat, then you would have to enable join before host sort of concept. Okay. All right, thank so you. If, if I could just add a little thing, if you do want yep. people, like maybe if they already know each other and you want them to be able to chat to each other until you kind of get there to start and you've maybe got guests or something, um, you could just create a breakout room and take your guests into the breakout room and chat to them over there and everyone else still just lands in the main room and then when you're ready to commence, you just move back. So I'd have to put them in the breakout room to have a no, chat though, put, they can't automatically go there. The, correct. You'd put yourself in the breakout room and your um, like special guests, like your guest presenter, um, that yep. you'd put them in there and chat to them there. But all of your other guests, just as they gradually roll in, as they log on, would just land in the main room if you didn't have okay. a wedding. So room. I guess in, in my setting, it'd be as people arrive, I'd be happy for them to chat with everyone kind of thing because that's what would happen face to face. Yeah. Um, so I'd yep. set it up that they all go into a breakout room. You can't do that. No, they oh, can only up. land okay. in the main room. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so tonight I just enabled join before host because I was happy for everyone just to sign in. I wanted people to test audio. You know, I wasn't having guest speakers, so I wasn't really setting up much. I just had my slides and I tested stuff with Paul and you guys wanted to hear that anyway because it was good to hear the process. Um, so that so if you're happy for your guests to be talking among themselves before while you're setting up like while you're getting your yoga mats down then i would just enable join before host one yep. if you don't like if you have guests coming and you want to test out slides and audio with your guests before all the participants came in so say for example joy paul gail and myself were running tonight and we all had different slides we had to test them all out 
then we would test them all out while you guys are waiting in the waiting room and then we're ready, we'd let you all in. Um, what Joy was saying with the breakout room was you could potentially, like Joy, Gail, myself and Paul, instead of having the waiting room, we could have been in a breakout room. So Joy, Paul, Gail and myself all go into a waiting room and you guys just go into the main room anyway, which is enabled to join, enabled to join before host. So you're in there waiting and talking. Um, but Paul will be talking a bit later around preparation and really just testing out that before you even begin on the day. So go in, get your friends to come and, you know, get 10 of your friends to come and, and test all that stuff out so you can play around with it a bit. Because it is tricky when you're on there and people are watching you and you're like trying to juggle everything as well. So it's good to test it. Um, uh, only authenticated users can join. Now, I, th I think that's the red, I don't know what that is actually. I'll have to look that up if anyone knows what that means. And then record the meeting automatically. So you can tick that. So as soon as you log in to your Zoom, it starts recording. Now that's good if you're really forgetful and you're just literally going to start on time. Um, but if you're going to be like, you know, getting everyone to chat in amongst themselves, you know, people really don't want to watch that. It means more editing time for you. So, but it just means that you have to remember to then go in and click record, which I'm going to do just check that I'm still recording. Yes, I am. <laughs> um, it, it's horrible when you're trying to, when you're wanting to record it and you forget to record. Um, so that's the process of setting up and scheduling meeting. You guys can go in and practice setting those up um, and you can just then cancel them as well. So I've just saved that. So now I have my yoga session set up and now I can actually um, share this invitation. So I'm going to copy this invitation and then I can share this out to everyone. So I can copy meeting, I can send it out by email. Um, or whichever way you're wanting to share it. And we're going to look at that a bit later um, when we setting up event tickets and promoting the event. So does anyone have any questions regarding setting up a Zoom meeting? Oh, Lisa? Yes. It's Faye. Um, how so you know if you were if you already had an account but it was a free account and then you wanted to um upgrade to the business one yes how do you do that is there just like an upgrade button somewhere yes so there is an upgrade so if you for example in the um yoga ones that i am now deleting yeah um under the session it said um it said uh this is longer than an hour so you would so it would in the free version because i'm in the paid version in the free version it would say you would need to upgrade and you can click upgrade there oh, okay so it will actually prompt you if you want to book it for longer it'll say oh you've only got the 40 minutes you'll need oh. to upgrade for longer occurrence does that make sense yeah perfect yeah. thank you yeah it will always prompt you to upgrade if you, if you can't do things um, but all those features we talked about, you know, the, the whiteboard, the breakout room, all those things are free. The things you need to consider is the attendee. So the attendee numbers, so more than, more than three for more than 40 minutes and you would have to upgrade. So that is, if it's, so I've got something on Monday night and it's me and I think there's just two participants. So th in that case, it would end after 40 minutes. Correct. But you could then all just say, let's just sign in and keep talking. So I've done that. Like when Nuri, Susanna and I, if we talk more than 40 minutes, which we're not allowed to, like we have to have quick meetings. But if we do go over 40 minutes, we can just sign back in and um, do that. If you know them, it's fine. If it's, okay, if yeah, it's a client or professional setting, I wouldn't recommend that. No, I don't think I can get away with doing that. It's all right no. though. I need to upgrade anyway, so yeah. yeah. Thank you. you. Faye, you can also click, sorry, it's over here, um, the pro plans and pricing on Lisa's screen up there. And um, in your free version, if you click that, then it'll give you the, the options. 
pens and pricing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. I can see it now. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Thanks, um, Zoe. Hey, Zoe. Hi, sorry. I was late and I'm like drinking champagne, eating chocolate, which is just ridiculous. <laughs> um, but I had a quick question. Yes. Um, I currently have like the $20, $21 one. Um, and I'm doing a bunch of uh, webinars soon because um, I was going out west to do a bunch of workshops and now they're all online. Um, I was just wondering because I've been looking at uh, getting like the upgraded one, which is like uh, $56 a month for the webinar version. But I was just wondering like now I see you can open like do the breakout rooms and stuff. What's the main difference um, if you if you know Lisa between the the paid webinar version, and maybe Joy, you might know too, um, and the free kind of, the uh, not free, but yeah. the $20 version. And then the webinar one gives you more options for inviting. So um, yeah, okay. so for, for now, I can just sort of copy this and then invite people in via my own email, where the webinar will let you really structure it. I think you can even um, set up payment with the webinar through Zoom. Okay. I think. Yeah, I and, had, I did see that. that there was and branding as well. So you can add your own branding um, with the webinar one. Yeah. I would totally just play around with the, the breakout concept first, like maybe yeah. do one with that and see how it goes or even just test it out with people before. And if that doesn't work, then check out the webinar one. Again, um, the Zoom people are phenomenal like with their customer service so just ask them as well like tell them exactly what you're wanting to do and they'll say you know this is probably the better option cool thank I you i don't know if joy knows more on that one um i just wrote a little bit there that um with your webinar basically unlike where we can see everyone else and we know how many other participants are on um in a webinar you can't uh mm -hmm. like you shut that down so you might have um, a webinar that might be running with say three people, um, but they would only see you and they wouldn't know how many other people were on. So there's just a few differences like that. Um, but it is a lot around the registration and also sharing the um, recording at the end can be um, automated through the webinar yeah, version. Cool. Yeah, but you can still do all the, um because I, 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 I envisage that I'll be doing, yeah, the breakout sessions and stuff. So I guess you get to see people once you break them out. Um, they get to see each other once they're yeah, in the breakout break, room. Breakouts are in the meetings. Um, in your webinar, I, I'm pretty sure you don't get breakouts, um, but you do get Q&A, which is something that you don't have in meetings. You just have a chat in meetings, but in a webinar, you get the Q&A button. Um, and then you have the option when people ask a question in Q&A to either reply in writing. Um, people can also upvote a question and you can also acknowledge that you're going to respond to that question live um, or, or not. Um, so there's a few extra sort of things there to just manage participant um, engagement over um, what you do in a meeting. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, because I was looking at, yeah. Anyway, I'll have a bit of a play and maybe I'll ask some Also, more Zoom will do a demo with you. So you can um, set up a demo and they can show you the webinar demo. They're very good at, at that. Mm. Yeah, I've, um, I've requested that. So um, I've Great. just got to get back. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. No worries. Now, Rowena was asking, how did Lisa and Zoe swap between videos? So it's set on the speaker view, which is an automated thing. So Zoom will know who's talking and will put you on because um, you're looking at your phone, so you're only seeing that one face. So it will put on there automatically the speaker view. And someone was asking about, is the webinar one the $21? No, the webinar is, um, so if you go over here, the webinar one is a, I think it's $58. And that's um, not the standard Zoom. So that's the additional features, which we're not covering tonight. Um, I think you have to have a plan first and correct me if I'm wrong. I think you have to have the $21 one and then it's an additional $56 or something. Um, yes. I from what I've looked right. at. Yeah, yeah it's expensive. <laughs> Cause I looked at doing it a while ago and I'm like, uh, nah, it's not If you're doing it. a lot of webinars, yes, it makes sense. Um, but if you're doing yeah. web, if webinars is your main income, 
then definitely. And there's a few other webinar um, software like Webinar Jam, which is another good one to look at as well. Um, and there's pros and cons to both. So I've heard Webinar Jam is better at reception maybe, like um, so you can have, uh, I don't know, yeah, just have a look, have a look at that. <laughs> I looked at it a long time ago, so it's all, I've all forgotten it. Um, can you change your setting to stop the video highlighting the speaker? I believe you can. Um, in, dun, dun, dun. I think you have to do that in, so you can change it to speaker view. What about the other one? There's two other views. Is it grid view? but only when you're not sharing a screen. So I'm not sure about that one, um, Joy. We'll have to look that one up after. Okay, so let's I think, go. Um, Lisa, oh, yeah. if you click up, um, and I think um, Joy's was not a question, it was a statement, but it's probably an important question. If you click, um, you know, if all our faces are up there, I think you can change um, swap screen, shared screen with video, I and mean, then you can just click that and then all our, but you can't see my screen, so you don't know what I'm doing. But there's a little <laughs> box if you've got the chat open just to the left of that, and I think you can switch out what you, what you see. Uh, Maybe that doesn't make sense. Yeah, no. Sorry, you can right. swap between speaker, grid, and gallery, and if yeah. you top yep. right-hand corner beside your full screen button, that's you what just, I'm trying to say. Yeah, can click Thanks, Joy. Yeah, no worries. But is that only, oh yeah, yeah. Is that, that's, that's jury, oh yeah, I can see that. So I can show grid um, thumbnail and speaker view. Yeah, yeah. Show active speaker as well. But I'm not sure what it's like on the mobile app. Yeah, no, so Rowena, so Rowena's on mobile, so when, I speak, she sees my face only because she only gets to see one face on the phone. Um, so when I'm speaking, she'll see me, but then when you speak, Joy, or when you speak, Zoe, then it will pop that up. So that's the speaker setting. So that's, I'm pretty sure in the background setting in Zoom where you can change that. All right. Yes, one at a time, it's really smooth. Yeah, it's good, hey, Ro. So Rowan is using the Zoom app. So you can download the Zoom app on your phone um, and use it that way as well, which is really cool. Um, but I wouldn't recommend, and we're gonna be looking at equipment and testing. I wouldn't recommend doing large webinars and organizing and managing large webinars from your phone if you're the host, because you have to scroll to see chats and to see participants. The best setup is on your laptop so you can see everyone, um, but definitely you can sign in and watch a Zoom from your phone. All right, so we'll take some more questions a bit later, but we're gonna jump into um, our next topic, which is um, equipment and preparation. So Paul, where are you hiding? Has he gone? No, I'm, I'm here, I know. Oh yeah, he's still there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, thank you, Lisa. Um, no worries. So Paul um, has kindly offered to um, talk about equipment and getting prepared for your meeting. So Paul's from Entire Computer Services up here in Toowoomba, and he helps people with their hardware and IT and connecting devices and all that stuff that I hate. I'm very much software. So I'll let you take it from here, Paul. Okay, yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Lisa, for that. And thanks for giving the opportunity to uh, present this to these um, many people we've got here. We've got uh, 30, 51, well, that's, oh, not 51, no, 33. Okay, um, so yeah, me, just a bit about me. I'm Paul Balti from Entire Computer Services. You can see that there. We specialize in tech support for individuals, homes, and micro businesses. At the moment, people working from home. Um, I want to be the campaign at the moment for helping people set up that as well as um, accessing their computers at work if they're stationary computers by remote access or if they need support from me, I can also provide remote support uh, quite easily. You just got to give me a call. Um, you can look me up on Google, you'll find entire computer services there. 
Okay, what am I going to cover? So in, in the next uh, 10 minutes or so, I'm going to talk about uh, various different pieces of uh, audio, common audio and video equipment. Okay, so you've got um, standard audio and video equipment. In this, we've got, uh, I'm going to start with microphones first. Now, with microphones, we've got a couple of, there's several different types available. They can be uh, ones that are on a headset, like the one I'm using. There's ones in the computer. There's freestanding ones. Uh, the first one I want to talk about, now let's go some annotations here. And now that I know how to use them, let's go the arrow tool. You'll see where I've got the arrow there. Uh, the, on my laptop, you'll see uh, there the laptop, I've got those two yellow arrows pointing to uh, examples of, you don't, you don't need high tech equipment for this. This is the, the uh, microphones I've got in, in just in my standard laptop will do the job just fine. That's where those two, there's actually two on a laptop. Uh, on older ones, there might only be one. It's usually located uh, towards the top of the screen there. Mobile phones, if you're using a mobile phone, you'll probably, I don't know if anyone's ever noticed, but you'll see on the uh, second picture to the right of the main one, you've got um, a yellow uh, arrow pointing to the microphone that's on the bottom of the phone. That's the one you actually use when you're talking on a phone call and stuff like that, unless you're on speakerphone. When you're on speakerphone, the um, speaker sound actually comes out of uh, that one there. No, hang on, no, that one there. And as a result, the microphone therefore gets uh, transferred when you're on speakerphone to the oh, to the uh, back, just to there. And uh, it's the same when you're using um, this for Zoom. Chances are you're going to be using the back speaker because the um, bottom one is mainly for when you've got it uh, up to your head. Okay, so. That's where your microphones are on your on your phones. They're really quite good uh, mobile phone uh, microphones. The third one now, bottom uh, the bottom left of that image there uh, is a desktop. That's what we call a uh, desktop mic. Now, desktop mics that one there is on a big heavy stand, but that doesn't mean that um, you have to use a big heavy stand like that. We've got, uh, at this location, we've got a desktop stand, which is only about 10 or 15 centimetres high, and it just does the job uh, just fine as much as this does. Um, I should point out that's a heavy base, which will um, stop any reverberation through the floor and things like that. The third one there. Now, that one's a lapel mic. You've probably seen on... Um, uh, TV presenters, they will have a small mic that's just clipped onto their um, lapel, just uh, near their collar, and that plugs into your computer. This one here, um, you'll see down the bottom here, I'm just going to try and draw, highlight this. This area there, no, that doesn't work. That one there is only is designed for a mobile, for a mobile phone because it's got extra things called poles on it. Um, it can be rather a bit of a minefield uh, getting the right sockets for that, and therefore there's there's other alternatives out there. Uh, next slide, Lisa. Okay. Now next slide. Now you'll see the um, the headset I'm wearing right now is the one in that uh, next picture. That's got a microphone on it, which is called a boom mic. These can be uh, particularly good um, because it doesn't have a speaker which uh, reverberates the sound, doesn't uh, play back the sound uh, through your microphone. That's why you find I'm uh, really quite clear here. The one I'm using right now is a Bluetooth one. It connects via a special Bluetooth adapter, or you can connect a Bluetooth on your um, actual uh, computer. Saves having to have cables and dangling around. I could spin around in circles if I wanted, wanted to. All right. The next one is uh, you probably remember years ago, these were uh, sort of common ish. They um, are cabled and they plug into, you'll see down the end of that cable, you've got a, a headphone socket and a microphone socket. They're um, a bit old these days and they're not used all that often, and some computers don't have a socket for both. Older ones do. The one, I'm, the computer I'm using here doesn't even have a socket for both them. 
So they, um, they're not often used, but they are cheaper. Okay, um, now moving on to cameras now. So that, that was microphones. It was fair, there's a lot more microphones in there, but they're the most uh, common ones out there. How am I going for time, Lisa? Doing okay? All right. Yeah, it's fine. Um, someone well, was just asking what brand your headset is, Paul. This this headset is a Plantronics brand. Now that's that's a re that's really quite a top uh, a top brand of headset. This was worth maybe two or three hundred dollars. By no means do you have to get fancy ones like this. Um, there's plenty of people in this chat that are using just conventional um, ones that are very similar to their their phone ones. Nothing special. And one my, well, my point here is you don't have to spend three two or three hundred dollars on a headset. But this one is a particularly good one, it has a thing called noise cancelling, which can be really uh, good in noisy environments or windy environments. So um, so there's a few yoga class teachers in here, Paul, so they'll be moving around a bit. Can they potentially use the earpiece ones that are wireless? Earpiece, oh yes, and that's this is pretty much the same. The benefit of this, it has, it has two, um, two earpieces which makes it easier to be able to hear uh, if, if you're talking doing a lot of two-way chatting so yeah that those ones this operates on a very similar principle this just gives you the benefit of uh, it's a bit more comfortable and some people like myself the reason i wear uh, a headset which is a full band and two earpieces because um, i have really small ears and those ones that push in the ears don't stay there that's just uh, what suits me now I was moving on to cameras. Now there's a few different types of cameras. Uh, the next picture, I'm sorry I didn't remove the yellow arrows. The, uh, a, an example of the camera which I'm using right now is, yes, thank you for pointing it out, is uh, where the red arrow is pointing. We've seen those, uh, most new laptops have those, all the ones mightn't, but you can buy desktop cameras to add to that, which I'll show in a moment. Phones, you'll see um, I've got a small yellow arrow pointing to where your phone is on the front of on the uh, on the front of your phone that points towards you. Often that, not that quite obvious. And then you've got the ones on the back. Some phones have up to four, five, six different types of cameras. Your, your phone will decide which camera is the best one to use. Okay, on to our next slide there. Here's another example, desktop camera. Now let's assume your um, laptop doesn't have a camera at the top of it like mine does there. Um, this can be uh, purchased from any retailer. You can get, this This is a Logitech one in that photo you're seeing there, which is a fairly uh, decent brand. Um, you can get them from any retailer or from eBay. But I should point out, you try and get cheap ones from eBay, at the moment it takes so long for the stuff to arrive, um, it'll take probably a month or two to get here, unless you buy local, because all the Chinese, the cheap stuff's Chinese. All right, now you'll see the next picture is, is uh, I'll jump forward a bit there. Now go back, Elisa. Uh, that one there, I've got my laptop sort of uh, showing the bottom of it. Those are spe uh, speakers, the different sorts of speakers you can have. Now it's important we discuss these. You can have, if you have speakers that are loud and if they're not built in the laptop, your microphone's in the top of the screen and your speaker's in the bottom, which means they face opposite directions. So you don't get that playback effect. We've all heard playback at different times and that can be really irritating. Phones do the same thing. They have the speaker facing the opposite direction to the microphone. But if you don't have a laptop using a desktop, doesn't have built-in speakers, you can go to the next one, the bottom left, which is external speakers. Just got to be very careful that if you have those on and you're playing your own voice back, you, you'll get a lot of uh, feedback and it can be a bit of a problem and also for other people listening. Um, and it's all about the preparation and setup. These external speakers can use two different socket types. See those two different sockets there? One is what we call three and a half millimeter audio. And the other one is called USB. USB ones um, are the more common ones now for your speakers, but you can, some speakers use uh, one, both, 
uh, we usually use a USB for power. Sorry for rushing through this, but I've got limited time. All right, so is there any more in that slide there? No, I think we've covered, we've zipped through a whole bunch of uh, different options there. There's still many more out there. Just want to discuss um, one of my pet, pet issues. Often people think they can just jump on Zoom. They've got 15 minutes before Zoom starts. They jump on, turn on their computer, and they think it's just going to work. How often have we seen that? really happen and the presenters assume they can do that the uh people that join zoom oh audio doesn't work the presentation doesn't work the video is not working all sorts of things in particular with zoom i just want to cover a few things you should consider in your preparation well before you actually start because the whole reason you jump on zoom is to enjoy and absorb the information that's being given if, if someone's presenting to you things to consider is first of all, um, your timings. Give yourself plenty of time in advance so you can test it before you actually use it. And that's usually in a meeting room, whatever it may be. Your location. If you're going to have video on, check that uh, um, what's behind you. The last thing you want is to have someone that's just jumped out of the shower and they walk past in the nutty and uh, uh, they're being transmitted to 100 people online. That's not a good... Uh, thing to do. Um, are the windows open or closed where you are? Is a, if a big gust of wind comes in, is it going to slam a door behind you? Is a, is a window, should the windows be closed? Temperature, make sure if it's going to be a long session that you adjust your temperature so you're well prepared. People around you, especially your children in your own home, warn them before you start, hey, I'm going to be doing a video here. If you really, can you wait till I'm finished? If you really need me, um, knock and wait for me to respond. Sometimes not so easily done. Um, Lisa, if there's chats there, please bring it to my attention because I'm not watching them. Okay, uh, other preparations. Lighting. I've got a great light here. It's an expensive one. Um, and I'll just show you what it would look like if I was just using these standard room lights. A bit dark. The, the lighting is above me and it's shining down and creating, creating a shadow below. So. Sometimes it can be quite disturbing, but if you want good lighting, you pretty much need to have a light directly behind your camera facing straight into your face so it makes you nice and bright. Okay, um, audio, once again, uh, be aware of fans that are running, air conditioners switching on, switching off, um, and things which can, which can uh, interrupt your audio. I can't stress enough, Prepare, 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 test in advance. Make sure, uh, check if things are working uh, before you get in there. Otherwise, if you've been mucking around with technology instead of actually focusing on what these sessions all about. Yeah, so that was a good example because my thing that I was using before was giving a buzzing noise. So you guys were able to tell me. Spot on, And yeah. I had another option I could turn to. But if I didn't have another option, you would just be listening to me via the speakers on the desktop. So that's also important, making sure you get other people to join in and listen to your audio as well to check um, the buzzing. Lisa, I'll just jump in quickly just for the ladies that are doing yoga and stuff. I'm not sure if you can see these. These are also Plantronics. Um, and they're running um, headphones and they and have they, Yeah, they're good. Yeah, great for them. exercise because they stay on. Yeah, so they're Bluetooth uh, with a microphone oh. and, yeah, they hook onto your ears. So, and they're about $130. Yeah, Plantronic is a good brand. Logitech makes some good stuff, but they're not as flexible as your big brands like the Plan, uh, Plantronics. Um, oh, there's plenty of them out there. I just use – I've been using Plantronics for uh, – I once headset I use for about – 10 years and this is recently I've only just got these so they're quite durable um, yeah, so the ones that questions there and where to get those joy if you want to type in the chat you just just checking oh, what was that Paul um, the ones that joy pointed out the ones I've got on you do yoga go running or something like that these will quite possibly fall off and you don't want expensive headphones falling off your head whereas the ones joy's got they hook onto ears and unless you've got no ears uh, they're going to probably stay on. Um, I zipped through that. I got a bit of a uh, That's uh, good, interruption we'll, there. We'll, we'll carry on because we've got carry one on. more bit to carry. If you just one last a plug for myself, 
uh, entire computer services. If you need any assistance with any of this stuff, give me a call. I can, uh, assuming I'm not stuck. Uh, yeah, give me a call. Assuming I'm, I'm not, we're not uh, grounded at home, I'll try and come to you, assuming you're not too far away. Um, uh, otherwise, I can uh, do remote support. You'd be amazed what can be done remotely. Thank you, Lisa. Back to you. Thanks, Paul. That was good. Um, and you definitely covered more than what I was talking about because hardware is not my thing. So now it's actually going to be part of the job that takes the most time. So setting up Zoom is actually quite easy in regards to the meeting and signing in. But getting your word out there and promoting your event uh, is going to take time. And you have to let people know about your events and services. So the first thing you need to consider is that if you're wanting to make money from the service or workshop, you will need to set up a way for people to pay you. So there are a few options. If you are running a one-on-one -on -one training session or a consult, you could just send them an invoice prior to it or after it. So they can pay that way. That way. So you can just email them the invoice using your um, accounting software. Um, you can also use this method if running smaller workshops, but if you're looking at getting, you know, over 20 people, you really don't want to be sending out invoicing. So this is where you would want to send, set up a ticket um, either on your website um, or using something like Eventbrite. So I'll show you the Eventbrite. I'm sure you guys have seen Eventbrite before. I'm sure a lot of you guys have purchased tickets via Eventbrite. So that's just the Eventbrite website and you can actually go in and set up, you can sign in and create a ticket by Eventbrite for free, but then they take out a commission um, on each ticket. Um, but that's definitely a really easy way to set it up. Um, so then once, oh, the other option is you could set it up on your own website. So for me, I um, set up websites for people so I can put ticketing um, like products as tickets on their website so people can purchase via their website. Then once they've purchased a ticket from you, you can then send the invite from the Zoom meeting with instructions for your event or your session. Um, the other option is you could set up something like MailChimp. So you guys actually signed up using a MailChimp landing page that I set up for this event. And this is free um, through MailChimp. So you can go in and um, create a sign up form with a landing page. So people can actually sign up and then the email out had the instructions and the Zoom link so they can sign in that way. You could also have a payment option there like they have to pay um, before entering. Otherwise, this is a really great way of doing it if you're running free events. So this is obviously a free event. I didn't have to take payments. So this was a really easy way for me to do it rather than setting up another web page on my website. So after you've decided on how you want to take money and you, how you set up your tickets, the next thing is um, how you're going to actually promote your event or your service. So all your social media platforms are now, you're now able to set up events on social media platforms. So Facebook has the ability to set up events via your um, business page. So this is the event that I set up via my RetroHex business page. And then once I set this up on Facebook, I can then invite people in and share it in. People can start spreading it across Facebook. People were sharing it in groups, et cetera. Um, and people can then come through and click the link, the link to sign up or to go through and purchase the ticket. The other option is LinkedIn. LinkedIn now also has the ability to set up events via your personal profile. You can't set events up yet via your company pages if you have company pages, but you can set it up via your personal profile. So you can see the events that I've been setting up um, there as well. Um, and it's very straightforward to set up. You can add your image, your description, and you can start inviting people in, which is a really great option. The other great thing about LinkedIn is that when you are inviting people in, um, you can select which um, location they're in. So I could just select people from Sydney or I could select people from Toowoomba and invite those people in from there. 
The other area where you can set up your event to promote is via the Google My Business tool. Um, this is a really great tool from Google where you can um, add your business and get found in Google search results. And the other ability is that you can add posts and events. So to add an event, all you need to do is create a new post and click the event option. And then you can fill in all the details there, add more details, add the event details in there, add a um, button to sign up or to book in there as well with the link through to your ticket. Um, um, so that's a really great tool as well. So Facebook has events, LinkedIn has events and Google My Business has events as well. Um, another great way of sharing your events is to join some Facebook groups. Now, this is a long-term game, but it's a great way of um, engaging with your audience and getting to know their needs and their situations. A lot of you would have found my post probably from a Facebook group. So you don't want to be salesy in a Facebook group. You really want to be engaging, interacting, commenting on other people's posts, encouraging other people. And then when people start to get to know you, they'll start to get to know that you run events or you run services and they'll be asking you about it as well. The other great thing about Facebook groups is a lot of them have theme days where you can post things such as your events or your offers that are coming up. I know in our region where we live, there's some really great Facebook groups um, and I'm regularly posting events in there when I'm allowed to. So make sure you connect in with those Facebook events um, as well. The next thing is a email newsletter. So this is another great way of getting your event out there. Hopefully you guys have started creating an email newsletter, collecting emails from your audience and your customers so that when you do have events coming up, you can send them out saying, look, I've got this cool event or this session or this training session, you know, you can sign up there. I definitely recommend if you haven't set up an email newsletter to start collecting emails. Obviously you guys, when you signed up to, to this workshop, I collected your email. So by running free events, it's another way of collecting your emails, but don't worry, I hardly ever email, so you won't get anything spammy from me. You'll probably just get the occasional invite to an event um, or something techie related. Um, but yes, I'm pretty slack with my newsletters. It's usually event related. Don't do what I do, do what I say. <laughs> the other thing which is really, really underutilized is press release. So, a press release is basically writing a one page article and submitting it to your local newspaper or media outlets so that when they have a spare spot or there's a trending topic, they may publish it. It's really important um, when writing this article not to be salesy. So the content should be, you know, say for example, you've got a yoga event coming up. It shouldn't be this week, I'm running yoga classes online, join now for $50. You should write an article that has some research around the importance of yoga for mental well-being, um, how it's a great way to keep active during this time of isolation. You could get a quote from an expert around how yoga helps with mental health and add that in there. Newspapers love quotes from experts. And then at the very end, you could say, you know, um, local yoga is offering now online and click and the link to the event. So you really always need to be thinking about the reader of that press release, what they would want to read about, um, and if it's valuable to that news outlet's readership. They're not going to publish something if it's just salesy and it's not going to appeal to their reader. So press releases are really great. And the, the thing about press releases is that sometimes you just need to persevere. You might not get one release, but maybe the next month they're looking for someone in the yoga field. Um, so it might get released. So just keep sending them out um, on a monthly basis if you're running regular events. Another great way to promote your event is to find out all your local online directories and websites that share local events and add it to those. So they'll generally let you add events for free as long as you're signed up to their website or their newsletter. Also, your local regional council will have event listings on their site. Um, and even your news outlets will have events listed. So make sure you get them listed there and they're all generally for free. You just have to sign in. 
Um, if you are interested in learning more about digital marketing and promoting your event, I do obviously run the digital marketing group called Eat Digital. And at the moment, because of this isolation, we're offering free access for the next month if you sign up before uh, uh, sign up before Sunday. So you can go to eatdigital.com.au, which I'll share in the chat here, and you can sign up for that for free just to try it out. There's heaps of content in there around social media marketing, press releases. Nuri and Susanna, who run it with me, Nuri's amazing at Facebook, and Susanna's amazing at press release and SEO. So it's a really great group. So feel free to sign up for that, just a monthly subscription, and it's free for the first month. But you have to do it before Sunday. So that's some ways of promoting your event. Obviously, it takes a lot of time to promote these events um, and setting up Zoom. It's definitely a new learning curve 